You may be seated. That is true. That is true. We're here this morning, and I don't have much time to preach because it is true. There has been transformation that we have experienced. If you agree with that, say amen. amen. I'm going to say a number of things that if you agree with them, say amen. We're gathered here today because as crazy as it might seem, God loved us so much to send His own Son. Amen? Amen. As crazy as it might seem, His own Son was born in human flesh. We call that the incarnation. The world celebrates it as Christmas, but they might not know all there is to know because Christmas is the celebration of the incarnation of the Son of God because He loved us. Amen? Amen? And then He lived and he preached, and he worked, and he made disciples, and he worked miracles, and it was written down so that we could read it as an example. Do you agree with that? Amen? Amen. And then, because he loved us so much, even though we should have died because we broke our relationship with God in sin, one man who was a God-man took that for us on the cross. Is that true? Amen? Amen? The blood was applied, and it didn't stop there. Because we gathered today on Easter because something else that's hard to believe happened. That man who was more than a man did not stay in the grave for more than three days. He rose, defeated death, and then he said, you want it? The whole world is looking for a new life. But I don't know where they're looking. I think we're looking everywhere, aren't we? Like... Many of us today, we came into the room because we found it in the blood applied, but most people are looking for a new life like Bill Morgan found a new life. Bill Morgan had a great 1999. He's an Australian truck driver, and his 1999 began with tragedy. He was in a a big truck accident, and he was declared dead at the scene for 14 minutes. And so they gave him something to help wake him up, and it did, but he had an allergic reaction that sent him into a coma for 12 days. And the doctor said, this man's not going to make it, and the family said, just give him a chance. And he pulled through. He lived, and when he woke up and realized what had happened to him, that he had cheated death, he felt, I must be the luckiest man alive. And so he went out and he bought a lottery ticket, and he won. Because this is such a crazy story, the Australian news got a hold of it, and they said, you know what, this truck driver was declared dead, lived, bought a lottery ticket, and won. This is a great news story. So they took him to the same gas station where he bought the lottery ticket. They said, Why don't, we're going to play this out. And you can go on YouTube and find this. Type in Bill Morgan, 1999, lottery ticket, Australia, you can type in anything. And then they, there's this shot of him scratching off the fake lottery. It's a real one, but just, yeah, 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 yeah. I won again. He won again. The first time he won $17,000. The second time he won $250,000. And all of us today are thinking, boy, I wish that would happen to me. <laughs> Most people in the world are looking for that kind of new life. If I just could cheat death once, if I just could get that like paycheck that could just put us over the top, there's a totally different kind of new life that we're talking about today. The whole world is looking looking for a new life, but Paul tells us in Romans chapter 6 verse 4, we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that Jesus, just as Jesus was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Now look at this first line. Being baptized, we were buried with Christ into his death. Do we know that's what baptism is today? We're going to have people who are being baptized today. And there is a spiritual joining with Jesus that happens. See, this is what was broken in the whole Bill Morgan story is he can pay for anything he wants to so long as he has the money for that price tag, but he can't pay to fix anything inside a bill. When we come to Jesus, the first step is saying, I believe that even if I were to surround myself with all these things that I've been fighting for in life, the real problem that I'm dealing with is coming from within me. And so the whole process of a new life on Easter begins with a self-joining with Jesus in his death. 
And that's what the first half of baptism is. You go beneath the water, and the surface of the water represents the surface of the ground. And Paul tells us that by being da- baptized, you're, it's like a spiritual joining with Jesus in his burial. And we do that because there's something in us that's broken that needs to be buried. If we really want a new life that's a lot more than just cheating death from a truck accident and winning the lottery a couple of times, which now that's 20 years later. I went and looked to see how's Bill doing today. He's still a truck driver. He bought a house and it's all over. He's surprised people are still excited about this story. It doesn't last. There is something that's still inside of Bill and inside of me and inside of you that needs to go into the ground. But Paul doesn't stop there. Christ has been raised from the dead by the Father's glory. Glory is a word we say a lot in church. What does that mean? Glory is like the value of God. How much is God worth? That's the word glory. The value of The value of God brought Jesus up from the dead. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. But he brought Jesus up from the dead. And what is the result of that? And like Christ, we also can live a new life. When we join with him in his death, we are joined with him in his resurrection. It's not just out here, it's in here. Bill Morgan won a lot of money, but the whole world is looking for a new life. The whole world is at the gym thinking, if I can just work out and get that cut body, Get that beach body so that all the people will be looking at me. If I can just get myself into shape, I think that's the thing missing. That's my new life. I'm going to go to the gym, and I'm going to work out, and I'm going to get cut so that I look, and that's my new life. Until it's not. Because there's a lot of sad people at the gym. I'm, I'm all right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find my new life. The whole world is looking for a new life in romance. I have this place in my heart, and I think my other half is out there somewhere. And I'm going to go find him. And the whole world is looking for the new life in a new romance. And if I can just find that perfect someone that will fill that little hole in my life, I'll be a whole person, and all my dreams will come true because that's what I saw in the movies. The whole world is looking for a new life in the economy. And if it can just go the way I want it to go, I went to school, I ordered everything, I'm doing every, I show up early to work, I stay late, I do everything I need to do. If I can just get that promotion, my new life is waiting right around the corner. And there's a lot of sad people with money. My new life is just waiting for me in sports, in my kids' sports. And I can, if I can just work out and train, if I can just get them to swing the bat like I want them to, and all of our hopes and dreams on this new life go into a sport, and then we turn 40. Am I right? That's a punchline coming from your 41-year-old pastor. Here's the reality. Every single place that the world is looking for new life is a gamble. And we have come in here today because we rolled the dice. It's a dice roll called faith. We stepped out in faith and we said, I don't know everything, but I know something. And I know something's missing in here. And we were buried with Christ in his death and we received the resurrection of Christ. And what we're getting ready to see here in a few minutes is a testimony from people where that has been true. So Pastor Nathan is preaching an introduction today. The meat and the guts of your sermon today is a proven testimony of new life. We're going to see it again and again, and it begins right now with dedication.